Hey there, everybody. Welcome. We are here in a study called Lesser Known People of the Bible. And today we're going to talk about a young lady named Rhoda, R-H-O-D-A, just a young teenage girl. And she's found smack near the middle of the book of Acts. So New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, A-C-T-S, uh, chapter number 12. If you've got a Bible, turn there with me and let's read our passage together. I think we're going to read about 20 verses or so here and learn about what's happening uh, with the Apostle Peter and then this young lady named Rhoda. And uh, we'll see what the interaction between her and Peter is all about. So Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. The Bible says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. So Herod is in charge, and he's trying to uh, persecute and inflict some pain into the leaders of the church. He wants this to stop, this uprising that's going on in Jerusalem, all these people trusting Christ as Savior, getting baptized, and the growth of the church. So he's going to try to put an end to it the best that he can. In verse 2, we find out one of the steps that he took, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. So that's beyond persecution. That's martyrdom. And so when we talk about Peter and Andrew being brothers and fishermen, and then James and John being brothers and fishermen, the sons of Zebedee, this is that James. So James the Apostle, the brother of John who wrote the Gospel of John and the book of Revelation and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, that James is killed with the sword. Verse 3 and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to further uh, further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. So that's just giving us a time in the calendar that this is happening. So after he killed James, the Jews <laughs> celebrated. They were glad to see this leader of the church killed. And so Herod said, oh, they liked that, did they? Well, let's get us another one. And so he goes and he takes Peter and arrests Peter and presumably had plans to kill Peter also. Verse 4, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So four quaternions. If you know anything about prefixes, you know that, that quat or quad is another four. So a quaternion is a group of four. So four quaternions is four times four, 16 soldiers. That's a lot of men to guard one guy. And so Peter's arrested, he's put in jail, and he's given 16 soldiers to guard over him. Verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the church is praying for Peter, and they're praying without ceasing, and they're praying unto God for Peter. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So God's telling us here the degree of security that is had uh, regarding Peter in prison. So here he is, presumably sitting on a bench, I don't know, uh, lying on a bed maybe or the floor. He is bound with two chains, and then he is sleeping between two soldiers. And then there are guards at the door of the prison. Verse 7, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. So this angel, he shows up in the prison. It's a bright light. He pokes Peter in the side and the ribs to get him to wake up. And the chains fall off of Peter's hands. And the angel says, Arise up quickly. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. He puts his jacket on. He puts his shoes on. Uh, and he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. So this angel gets Peter out of the chains, gets him out of the prison cell, 
gets him dressed, and he's following the angel. Verse 9, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So Peter actually thinks he's dreaming here or that he's seeing things. He, he's half asleep still, right? He'd just woken up abruptly, and now this angel's leading him out of prison. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. So they got through two wards of the prison, and then they get to the gate that uh, allows you freedom into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. So the gate to the prison just opens up. The angel doesn't do anything. Peter doesn't do anything. It just opens. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith, the angel departed from him. So as soon as the angel gets Peter free from prison, the angel disappears. And Peter is now a free man again. Verse 11, Peter wakes up here, and when Peter was come to himself, so he's aware that this is reality, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So Peter knows God did this. God set me free. He got me out of prison. He got me out of the hand of Herod. He got me out of the hand of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And so here's the house of this lady named Mary, uh, and he goes there. And this is where the church's prayer meeting has been going on for him. And now Rhoda's going to show up in verse 13. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. So this damsel's this young lady, uh, maybe a teenager perhaps. And so she knocks on the door. Rhoda hears the knock. She wants to see who it is. So she goes to the door. Now, the way I understand this is there's no way for Rhoda to see that it's Peter because verse 14 tells us this. When she knew Peter's voice, so she didn't recognize his face, but she knew his voice. Maybe Rhoda heard him preach at Pentecost. I don't know for sure. But she hears Peter's voice. Uh, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate. Well, here's the thing. Peter is an escaped fugitive. <laughs> He's on the run from the law because he just got busted out of prison by the angel. So he really needs to make his way into a house to hide. And so here he is, it's the middle of the night. You know, when it's the middle of the night and the city is pretty quiet, any kind of noise or distraction can be heard by those in the surrounding area. And so he knocks on the door. He's got to knock loudly enough that he's heard, but not so loud that he would wake up the neighbors, if you will. And so Rhoda comes running out and she says, yes, can I help you? And Peter says, Yes, it's me, Peter, the apostle. Uh, please let me in. And instead of letting him in, Rhoda runs back into the house. Look at it again, verse 14. When she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. She's really excited. She's happy. Hey, we've been praying for Peter, and now here he is at the gate. And he's like, hey, wait, come back here. Open the gate. I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the run from the law. Come get me. And uh, so she ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. So she runs in, disrupts the prayer meeting, and says, Hey, everybody, we don't have to pray anymore. Peter's at the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. That means crazy. You're crazy, Rhoda. He's not out there. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And listen to them. Then said they, It is his angel. Rhoda, that's not really him. He's in prison. You must be seeing his spirit. Maybe he's dead now, and, and so that's his ghost out there. <laughs> it's funny to me that they would be praying for his release, and then when he's released, they think, oh, he's probably dead. Our prayers didn't work. Uh, but Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, you know, shh, be quiet, don't be so loud, he declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, 
And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And that's a little heartbreaking, isn't it? Uh, perhaps he doesn't know that James is dead. Maybe it's James, the brother of Jesus, he meant instead. And he departed and went into another place. And so that's the end of the story here. And isn't it funny? This young lady named Rhoda, her name is only in the Bible one time. Uh, she does get three verses here, verse 13, verse 14, and verse 15. Uh, but that's it. And what is Rhoda's uh, claim to fame? She answered the door after praying that Peter would be released from prison and found that Peter had been released from prison. And in her excitement, she ran in the house, told everybody they called her crazy. Uh, but Peter continued knocking, and then everybody that then saw him was astonished. So here's where it is. I think Rhoda has greater faith than everybody else in the house. She at least believed it was him. They said, ah, it's probably his ghost. I also appreciate her excitement and zeal. Uh, she has great faith that's displayed here to just leave him in such a hurry, in such a rush, because she's so thankful and excited that the Lord has brought him out of prison and she gets to tell everybody. I also notice she knows the voice of Peter. And so it's important to hear the voice of the teachers that God gives to us. Uh, I sometimes feel a little convicted. Boy, I run my mouth an awful lot. I do a lot of teaching, a lot of preaching. We do this every day uh, on the online devotion. I talk to people all throughout the day. Uh, but it's the the calling that God's given to me and my voice is the tool that he's given to help teach the word of God. And, and so here Rhoda knows Peter's voice. She's heard him preach. She's heard him teach. She's probably received instruction from him. And uh, so God bless this young lady Rhoda. God bless her zeal. God bless her spirit. God bless her faith. What a wonderful young lady. May we live to be like Rhoda. Even if you're not a teenager anymore, you can be excited for God and you can show some zeal for serving God and you can have faith in what God's promised he would do and you can have faith that God's going to answer your prayers. Isn't that good? Hey, thanks so much for watching today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.